Okay. Hello and welcome to Lulu's Way, Healthy Food, Healthy Life. My name is Barbara and I am grateful for the opportunity to be your host this evening. In order to keep this meeting free from distraction, we ask that all in attendance please mute yourselves unless you are speaking. We also ask that you keep the video mode turned off if you are doing anything other than sitting and participating in this meeting so that we can minimize distraction. In this community, we gather to support, encourage, and inspire on the benefits of nutrition, weight loss, wellness, and the joy that comes from choosing to serve yourself well. We are not medically trained, nor do we have formal training in nutrition. We come together here for the sole purpose of providing support, sharing experiences, and promoting a healthy lifestyle. It may be wise to check with your healthcare professional with any dietary suggestions or advice you receive from this group discussion especially if you have health challenges. Individuals in this group may have different ideas on how to eat healthy. Just figure out what works best for you and do it your way. Alrighty, there we go. The business portion is done. Yay. <clears throat> Yay. It's important. So it's hello important. everybody. It's good to see everybody again. Uh, okay. So, Today, um, I took, uh, we had a, a list of, I, I think at one point, a few months ago, we put a question out, any topics that you might be interested in. <clears throat> and somebody said, uh, what is your why, the why, you know, why am I doing this in quotes? What is your why and what motivates you? So I thought that I would share what my why is and what motivates me. And perhaps we could all do the same thing. Um, although when we open it up for sharing, you can share on anything that you want. But, um, you know, it helps to have a little focus. Um, what is my why and what motivates me? Well, I think that we would all agree that initially out of the box, our why is always about being skinny. <laughs> it's always about being skinny, right? Like, the reason we want to get on a weight loss journey is because we want to be thin. You know, we want to be in normal clothes and look cute and all that stuff. But in the past, when that's been my only why, it's just not powerful enough. It's just not strong enough because as soon as I get there, um, I know that I have time to eat again before I'm fat again. And it always seems like when I get back into the food stuff, the stuff that I did, I went without for all that time and I was like longing for it the whole time, right? And then I have it. So then like the next day I'm still skinny. And then the next day I'm still skinny, you know? And then, so, and I always think, I don't think that like, oh, I'm going to do this every day for the next month and then I'll probably be up five pounds and what's five pounds if I've just lost like 50, like five pounds, I can take care of five pounds, but it never goes like that. It just never goes like that. So that's why for me, like every time that I've went on a weight loss journey, when my why was about being skinny and adorable, uh, it's just, just, just doesn't have the staying power. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody, if you're familiar with uh, Esther, um, Esther Hicks, Abraham, it's the Law of Attraction. Um, she writes books on the Law of Attraction, Esther Hicks, um, really good stuff. Anyway, I'm on a, um, uh, a daily, I get a daily quote that comes in the email from, from, from her. And it's just, it's just what I start my day with. I, re I just read my Abraham Hicks, uh, um, quote. And um, this morning's, I just wanted to share this morning's because um, I, I thought about this topic and then I read this and uh, let's see. Here it is. So it says, take the time to line up the energy first and action becomes inconsequential. If you don't take the time to line up the energy, if you don't find the feeling place of what you're looking for, not enough action in the world will make any difference. And I just thought about like the action 
the action that it takes to to get these go but without that without that energy that's coming from a real powerful place um you know that's what that's where i found i was weakening so you know when my why my biggest why today is that if i don't do this every day i'm nuts <laughs> my life is nuts my life is not peaceful i forget everything that's important the only thing that becomes important is putting that food down again and then i struggle trying to do it it's just easier to keep it down than to just keep putting it down you know so my energy is lined up with i just want i just want to live a peaceful life i just want to live a peaceful life and um and then you just get you just get nice and slim and trim along the way you know it just kind of happens as a result of me saying this is what i'm going to have um i'm going to enjoy it like if if this is what i'm going to have i might as well enjoy it you know uh, but if i'm resisting it because i mean when i think about all the times that i've been on diets before i would sit there with the with the plain chicken and the boiled veggies and you know um and i would be thumbing through cookbooks it would be like it was just like my pornography you know <laughs> just be like looking at all the pictures and i'd be like oh i remember that no oh, i'm gonna make that the minute i'm off this diet i'm making that you know and i tell you there is nothing like just forget about it just forget about it it's like it's just not that important what I, what do i always say it's that acceptance versus the resistance am i accepting or am i resisting so when when i stopped resisting i felt peaceful and um when i know what i'm going to eat and i eat it every day um the same amounts every day just what i need just what i need why do i need anything more than what i need you know <laughs> like they say well you know there's people starving in the world that's because we're all eating too much it's like we it's like if we only ate our share there'd be such an excess of food for everybody but we're eating you know people just eating far too much way more calories than you need you know um um and you know all this junk food that they make is is there only because we buy it like it's there because we buy it like a lot of people are like oh it's a shame like they've got this shit they put in the stores and it's not even food it's all a bunch of can but we're buying it it's just kind of like uh you know the news like oh all the news it's just bad news you turn it on it's bad news but you're watching it you know it's just kind of like you just have to decide what you're going to take in both visually, what you're going to listen to, who you're going to be with, and what you're going to eat. To me, it's about, it's like a, it's like a complete thing. So I would say what motivates me is that it's part of a complete healthy uh, mission that I'm on. And, you know, I want to be healthy. Um, I want to feel really good. Um, I'm not looking to, like, people are kind of, sometimes people say to me, like, you know, you gotta live. And then like people will say, you know, like, oh, then, you know, the way you live and what do you want to live to be a hundred? Are you expecting to live to be like 110, you know, something like that. And I just say like, I don't know how long I have. And I, I have a feeling that I don't have much to do with that, with that number, but I do have a lot to do with the quality of my life. So it's more about quality versus quantity and I know I've said that here before um quality and that's not just about eating well and being slim that's a big piece that's a big piece but there's so many other pieces too and I don't like the way that the way that uh the food has disturbed my life my whole life it's been disturbing to my life it interferes with everything because I get I just end up getting preoccupied with it you know, um, like, uh, I went over to visit my nephew today and, uh, 
he was coming in from grocery shopping when I pulled up. So I started helping him in with the bags. And I was just like peeking in the bags. I was just like, do you think you got enough junk food here? <laughs> like, is, I think I don't think there's like one item that you missed, like in every category. And uh, um, I was just ribbing him, you know. But you know something? If I wasn't following my plan and had a plan for myself that eliminates all of that, uh, I would just be, I would be, I would have been preoccupied with all that stuff. He would have said, what do you want, auntie? Help yourself to anything you want, you know? He's 47 years old, but he was buying a lot of this junk for his, his six-year-old son. <laughs> but, you know, I think, like, I think, I mean, it's not that my shopping cart was always full of junk, but we always come home with junk for the kids. Everybody comes home with junk for the kids, you know, like treats and everything's a treat and let's go out for an ice cream. And it's like, you know, I grew up like that. My kids grew up like that. But you know something? I don't think that's the the reason that I'm like that today because, you know, it was, there was food was a big thing, Italian food, Italian family food and, you know, just all that snacks and treats and pastry, you know, uh, because, you know, my kids grew up this way and neither one of my kids have a food issue. I'm like, I don't even, if I wasn't there to give birth to you, I wouldn't believe that you were mine, <laughs> but I was there and it really hurt. I know I did it, <laughs> but uh, I, they're fortunate they take after their dad, who's very, very slim, and they they all just eat whatever they want. They just don't want the quantities that I wanted, and they don't get all preoccupied with it. And 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 so, um, and you know, sometimes like I'll, I'll I'll sit here try to figure out like how this happened to me, like like trying to find the reason for it like oh like it was something my mother did like when I think back to like my mother I could she was always on a diet joining a diet club you know she probably always struggled with maybe 25 30 she didn't struggle with 100 like I would play with she was like a 25 30 but I remember she put like Jack LaLanne on the TV and she'd be doing these scissors and stuff and I can remember like uh you know, she would always be on a diet, up and down, always up and down, up and down. And um, I can remember when she would like lay on the couch, like kind of curled up. And then I would lay down, like this is as a little girl. And I would have my, put my head like on her, on her, the back of her legs. Like, and she would smell like rubber because she would have a girdle on. She, she would always be all bound up in a girdle, you know? I mean, this is back in the day, right? And, um, uh... This was before Spanx. <laughs> that I think a little bit more comfortable. All those those things can strangle you too, because I'm familiar with those things. Um, but I can remember her. I can remember her like eating food, like m maybe taking a cookie and chewing it, and then spitting it in the sink, and taking another bite and chewing it and spitting it in the sink. And I'd just be like, she just wants to taste it, you know. She just wants to taste it. And she doesn't want to swallow it because she doesn't want to cheat in her diet. That's the crazy I'm talking about. You know, I don't remember ever doing that because I would probably just swallowed it and said frigate. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I never got into like bulimia. In fact, it never even dawned on me. And after I learned about it, like years later, I thought, geez, why didn't I ever do that? That's a great idea. You know, <laughs> it just seemed like a great idea. Although those people, it's not good. That's so dangerous. And um, so, see, just like this crazy stuff. Like I just wanted to be without, I, I just wanted to give up the crazy life. And the only, the only area of my life that really felt crazy was around food and alcohol too. The two of them. And they both, and the cigarettes, the three of them. <laughs> Hold on, I might think of more. Uh, <laughs> But those three things really just kind of owned me, you know. And um, so uh, what motivates me is just to live in peace, just to live in peace. And I feel so much more peaceful when I'm in a healthy, normal-sized body. I feel so much more peaceful when I just know what I'm going to eat and I, I don't have to negotiate. I don't have to... Uh, 
try to guess which what what should I have or or is oh I'm going to the gym so I could have this I could have this pizza because I'm going to the gym later and then you never go uh, not like if you went it mattered anyway because you're not you know the gym isn't that powerful food is pretty powerful that can kind of make or break you as far as um, your your weight um, efforts weight loss efforts uh, so that's you know that that quote that I that I showed you it was just about lining up that energy so that your actions are are matching up too because when they're conflicting I just feel like uh, it's chaos in here if you were with me you probably wouldn't see the chaos um, on the outside I was just you know fun and the life of the party and funny and crazy the crazy silly one you know and uh, but inside I was dying you know and I was always struggling I was either eating and wishing I wasn't or I wasn't eating and I wish I was I was just never content it was just this discontentment that was just kind of really screwing with me so that's what my why is and um, and what motivates me and Barb would you like to um, share your experience with why, what your why is and what motivates you? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, um, yeah, I understand the crazies. Not a big fan um, of those either. But for me, this time around, and, and I'm hoping this is why it will be different, for me, this time around was all centered around health and being over 60 and feeling like um, my inside body wasn't going wasn't gonna to last me as long as I wanted it to because I felt so bad. And a lot of that had to do with the dairy. But, um, but I also knew that my blood pressure, although I don't have high blood pressure and never did, but it was higher than normal. <clears throat> so that was... Um, concerning to me and also um my cholesterol numbers were higher than normal um some were out of range my triglycerides were out of range and my good my good cholesterol was in range but barely and my bad cholesterol was in range but barely so like you know i was just teetering on the edge of you know cholesterol medicine and you know, you don't want to take cholesterol medicine if you don't have to because it affects other organs in your body or it could affect other organs in your body. And so, anyway, so mine was all about health. And so um, that was my why. So when I quit the gluten and I quit the dairy and I started feeling so much better and you've heard me say this before, you know, I don't, I don't care if I lose another pound, I just feel better. So I know this is right. And then when I quit the sugar, um, the side effect from that, not having anything with sugar in it, and what I was doing with gluten and dairy and my portion control around what Lulu does, um, the side effect of that was weight loss. And that's a great side effect. So I already felt great because I got rid of all the inflammatory foods that were um, causing me to feel sick, and now I'm losing weight. And so... I was just thrilled and it, and it lasted until, um, about a pound a week until, um, I hit my goal. And so, um, when my why has been for somebody else, which that has been my why is because I want to look good for somebody else that never lasts. Mm -hmm. That's not good enough. Or if my why has been because, um, I want to be in a certain size pant that never lasts because once you get there, then exactly what Lulu says, well, you know, cookie's not going to make a difference and I would do that or whatever. Um, but this time around at 60, when I started and my why being my health, it was like, it's now or never. Mm. That's what it felt like for me. And so, um, 
losing weight was, um, I had to do it. I had to do it. Um, and I also have an, uh, you know, I have family that I just couldn't keep up with. So I have a young niece that, um, I go visit up in Vermont <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, she was running circles around me and I couldn't keep up. And so that bothered me and this is all health related. So, you know, these were all kind of key pieces to, uh, me getting healthier and truth be told, I couldn't really get off the ground very well. So if I sat down on the ground with her, it was awkward for me to get up and, and that was a little bit embarrassing for me. So, um, but it all had to do with health and, um, I've always been an athlete and I sure, certainly didn't feel like an athlete at that point. So, um, yeah. So, so, you know, I'm a year out and, uh, this time last year I went to my doctors for my yearly physical and, you know, things were starting to move in the right direction. Um, but I was still obese and I was uh, still, my, my blood pressure was higher than normal and all my numbers were okay, but not great. So this, so I just, I just went this week to my doctor and, um, my why has been met. So all my numbers are better. Yeah. Uh, my, um, thank you. My, uh, my blood pressure is great. My, um, my triglycerides are as low as they've ever been. And, um, I've never been able to control my dry triglycerides through the, through diet because I back up. I couldn't control them through nutrition. I don't like the D word. Um, that's just me, but through nutrition, I've never been able to do it. And I, I never knew why I'm like, why can't I get these triglycerides down? So I, I brought it up on my phone. That's why I have this and, uh, triglycerides, um, the things that cause high triglyceride levels are saturated fats, um, cheese, whole milk, ice cream, fast foods, uh, butter, um, sugar, highly processed meats, sweetened beverages, baked goods, everything I used to eat, everything I used to eat. And now I don't eat them. Everything I eat is a whole food. I don't, I don't remember the last time I ate anything that came in a box. Mine comes from the produce section. And so by doing that, by following Lulu's way and doing whole foods and getting rid of the three, three triggers of dairy, gluten, and sugar, which is all on here and the processed foods and the processed foods is huge. My triglycerides are the lowest they've ever been. I, I forget the number off the top of my head, but they're low. And she said, it's great. So, um, yeah. So within, so it's taken me a year, what's this April, just 13 months, 13 months. And I lost 60 pounds and my health is back. So for me, that's, that's everything. That's it. That's, it sounds simple. It wasn't simple. It was really hard in the beginning, but I, I just, you know, I just knew if I wanted to be healthy, if I wanted my life back, I had to do it. So that's my why. That's great, so, Barb. That is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I, and I, and I, I hope this doesn't sound braggocious or braggy or anything. Or, oh, God, no. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to say food will make you sick and food will make you healthy. Mm. And if you choose for food to make you healthy, and you choose to eat the food that's on this plan, you will get healthy. You will become healthy. I, I have no doubt about that. Mm. There's no, there's no way you can't because all you're eating is good food. You're not getting the processed foods. You're not getting the uh, preservatives. You're not getting the sugar and all the inflammatories, right? I don't know if you can see my hands. They're pretty arthritic, especially this finger, my middle finger. Should I do it? That one? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, it's, I mean, look at it. It's, it's pretty arthritic, right? 
used to hurt so bad. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt anymore. It's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, look at it. It's, it's pointing, it's pointing west for God's sakes, but it doesn't hurt because I don't have the inflammatory foods in my body. And I think, you know, did the inflammatory foods cause that? Maybe, but then because I don't eat them anymore, I don't have the pain. So, um, I know Carol, it's like looking at mom's hands, isn't it? Right. My sister's here again. So that's why I said that. Oh. Um, my mother had arthritis in her hands. So my, my hands are very similar to hers and, uh, but I don't have the pain. And for that, I'm so I'm thankful. Mm. And that's because I've removed most of the inflammatory foods out of my nutrition. So, and stepping down he, and, uh, going back to disturbing your peace and discontentment living in pain is not a peaceful way to live living with, well, with health pain. living with health issues that are weighing heavy on you is not a peaceful life so you know you do whatever you have control now you know i was i was waiting for some some kind of diagnosis so that i could i thought a diagnosis would would like get me like I would go to like the doctor and say like, you know, what are my, what are my living numbers? You know? Cause I want, I want her to tell me like, oh, you know, you're borderline, like things are not looking good where you look. Cause then I figured if I heard that, then I would stop drinking. Or if I hear something about my health, then I'll eat better. And oh, tell me this about my lungs, then I'll quit smoking, you know? And uh, I kept like trying to find some bad news and it, like it wouldn't have worked anyway. But I never got it. So I never, so that is why that's, that wasn't my why. Although it sure, it sure is a reason why I'm healthy today. Because I, I did, like I tell in my weight loss story, when I was 55, 10 years ago, I had a vision about my 60s. And it, and it really looked uncomfortable and unhealthy. It was right around the corner. And I was like, that's not how I'm going to spend my 60s. And I just, you know, I just kind of got real with myself, you know, and, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a, there's, um, yeah. And as you know, Lulu, it, it's helpful when you find someone who's done it and shares their story. And that's what you did on YouTube. And that's, that was like, oh yeah, this could work for me. And, and so that, that was helpful as well. So, I mean, I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, maybe or not, but you, you've been so impactful for me because you laid out a plan for me that would work and that made sense. And so for that, I'm eternally grateful for that. So thank you. And you know, and then when you, when you were emailing me all the time and, you know, saying, what should I do? Like any situation that would come up, she'd be like, what, what would you do in this situation? And she was just, she was like, she wanted to find all the reasons why she could keep doing it rather than on your own, you'll find the reasons why you can't do it. Oh, because it's Christmas. Oh, because it's got to go to a wedding. What am I going to do? And so instead of her thinking this, this is an obstacle, she just wrote to me about the obstacle. It's never been anything that I haven't experienced an obstacle in the yeah. past 10 years, right? And I was just like, well, this is what I do. This is what I've done. Or this is what I would do if I were you, you know? And uh, and then, you know, since you asked, <laughs> um, and uh, she just kept, she just kept asking because she wanted it so much. And the other thing everybody should realize here is that, you know, we started in January or maybe you started in March or maybe you started in December, but we're all around the same time that we started. You know, we have a whole year to figure our, our nutrition out, get it down, dial it in before the big holiday season. And trust me, when the holidays come, I had it all dialed in and you'll have it all dialed in. It will not be, a derailer for you. You will be able to just swim through the holidays, just, get out the other end, yeah. you know, not be three sizes bigger like I usually was. Oh, that's an exaggeration, but you get the point. Um, yeah, 
So there's so much to look forward to. Yeah, to, so, and to know yeah. that like you can get through the holidays and you don't even have to suffer through them. You actually say, you wow, food. these really don't have to be all about food. They really don't have to be. It's just an in interesting way to, to spend holidays, you know, very, very unique. It's nothing that I ever did for decades. You know, it was I just, it. it was all about the food and um, who's making what and how much and who's, when is that coming out? And, oh, is that ready yet? You know, is it just... Should it all be about family? Yeah, about family. Yeah, just like you just, you know, you show up and like when I showed up at my nephew's today, I brought my lunch and um, I just enjoyed my lunch and I was just present for him at a difficult time that he's going through right now. I was very, very, very present, very present. And um, yeah. Okay. So let's open hey, it up. Shall we open it up? Talk all day, guys. Oh, yeah, we never shut up. Not a problem with that. <laughs> but if anybody would like to share or has a story, Carol, you're up. How are you? Hi, Carol. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, I figured I'd come on first and chat. I have to, unfortunately, jump off right at seven. But, um, you know, I give you guys a lot of credit, both you and Barb. Um, I. I was kind of with Barb during her last year when she was losing all the weight and I was struggling and I would gain a pound and she'd lose three, you know, so that was fun. But, um, but I do have to say I'm struggling. And when I was, how old was I? I was 50, I think right before I was 50, I lost 50 pounds. And so I, w I felt great then and I found it. You know, over the over the course of whatever five or seven years, and so I've been struggling ever since. And and my why is because I want to be healthy, just like Barb, just like all of us. We want to be healthy. We don't want to be, you know, regardless of how how long we live, we want to be healthy while we're doing that. So, um, so that's my why and my goal really is to get off the you know the blood pressure meds and the cholesterol meds if i can um but i but i have to say i just continue to struggle and I, that's not that doesn't mean i'm going to give up i'm just acknowledging the fact that like you both said it it's not easy you know and so i you know i'm kind of reading reading the comments to the chats and, and I'm not the only one, it seems. So, you know, uh, um, I'm just going to carry on and I'm going to try to do a little better every time I am my own worst enemy because, you know, I host a card night on Wednesdays and, you know, I, I have this internal dialogue with myself and I say, well, you know, just because I'm not eating chips and stuff like that, I don't want to be a bad host. You know, I have to put sweets out and I have to put this and that out. Next thing you know, my hands in the bowl, you know, so um, I've been trying to put out stuff that I like M&Ms. I don't, it's not that I don't like them, but if I start eating them, I wouldn't stop eating them. So I just don't, I can, I can um, stay away from those. So I, you know, I put those out. Come, you know, truth be known, though, every single person in my little card group, these ladies, all of us, all of us are overweight, you know, so, so um, it's something I think I'll have a discussion of, of come to Jesus moment or something with with everybody one Wednesday and say, you know, listen, what are we doing? You know, so, um, yeah, I just want to be healthy, but I, I just I, you know, I. I don't do what I, I say I'm going to do, you know, I, whatever I slip or I don't have the motivation or, you know, I go nuts for a second and I'm, you know, eat a potato chip, but, and then I, and then I beat myself up about it, you know, so none of that is, is positive, you know, so, and I love, I love Abraham Hicks, by the way, anybody that, you know, is interested, check that out because that is just, I love Esther Hicks and I really admire all of that stuff. But, um, so thank you for that quote. 
So that's my why, and I'm going to carry on, and um, and hopefully next year at this time I'll be looking like my baby sister over there, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> she is the baby. <laughs> You know, Carol, anyway, that's it. You know, Carol, it, it, it's not easy, but it gets easy. And you have to trust me on that. Like it's 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 never easy to put anything down that's kind of addictive. And sugar is really an addictive. It's like it's like yeah. it's like cocaine, you know. Uh, and so like any like a drug addict that's given up drugs, like sometimes they have to be hospitalized because it's so miserable. It's so miserable, their body can't even handle the withdrawal, their mind can't handle the withdrawal. And then, you know, if they can get through that period um, and come out the other side, you can't live your life like that. So you can't live right. your life like struggling with food. All it's like, no, I can't have it. Like if, 10 years later, if I was still saying like, oh God, I wish I could have that cake. <laughs> I mean, that's not a peaceful life, you know? Right. And so that's why we really can't sustain that for a long period of time. But when you really stick with it and you just really flush your body of that stuff, it's about like, not for me, it's, it, it was like to not have it at all because any little bit I put in my body, it just made me keep craving it. It just kept the cravings, you know? So mm -hmm. once, the, once, once the cravings go away, you know, you can be the only one at the card game that's that's healthy and slim and not eating the chips. You can be. You don't have to all do it together. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I do a lot of things with people and um, uh, they just just do what you got to do. I just know what I, I want to do, you know, and um, and. You know, before you put your hand in the chip bowl, just say, what am I choosing here? What am I choosing? If I choose the chips, then I'm choosing the high cholesterol and I'm choosing the high blood pressure, you know? And, and when you mm -hmm. can just really connect those two things and then just say like, you know, why am I even thinking of doing that? You know, just right. don't do it. No matter what else that anybody else is doing. I had it just like, even in my house, you know, like, you know, for these past 10 years, there's people in this house that nobody eats like me. Nobody eats like me, you know, and I smell things, I see things, but it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter anymore, you know, um, and they're not overweight, but even it doesn't even matter if they are or not. Like nothing really matters about everybody else, because you right. know something, if you had this card game and everybody was eating healthy and there was no snacks, that's only one night out of the week. What about the other six? <laughs> Who are you with? What are they not doing that you, that, what are they doing that, that you, you can't do? Well, you know, you know, it's like, you just have to take like everybody out of the equation, just focus right. on making those choices for yourself. And then just, if you can just resist the temptation, I'm telling you, I'm going to say it will be uncomfortable for maybe three weeks. I'm going to say about three weeks, you'll be like, this sucks, you know, and then you just get over a hump, especially when you start to see a little bit of results, you start to feel better because the inflammation and stuff can go down in three weeks, you know, and start to feel better and then just say, yeah, this is what I'm going to choose, you know, but you got to get a little taste of what you're choosing and it takes time. It takes that time. And I think that's why people struggle. It's so hard to get through that period of time of withdrawing, feeling deprived, you know, going against like trying to eat like you don't even want to eat like that, but you now you feel like you have to. And then you just get into the space where it's like, this is what I want. I want this food. I want to feel this way. It doesn't matter what anybody I'm with is doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that you get there someday. You know, thanks. Just keep, <laughs> yeah, will. yeah, and just keep message Barb. Say I'm having the card game tonight. What do you think I should? <laughs> How am I gonna keep my hands out of the close. out of the chip bowl? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talk a lot, Lulu, and and um, uh, Carol's very close. It's just it's just That's a nice. few few tweaks that she has to do, yeah, and then she'll be there 100. percent Yeah. 
Yeah, um, she just... has a large family too. So I mean, it's it's uh, yeah. you know, she's got to work through it. Yep, but yep. It's guys. just about yeah. It's just that yeah. Just as you're suffering through those first couple of weeks, just know that that's normal. But that's not what the way it's going to be. That's not the way that Barb and I are living right now. You know, in that, oh, I can't, I can't. It's we don't, we don't. I don't eat that. Because I can eat anything I want, but I don't, you know. So Great. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Carol. Yep. And everybody knew that I was younger, right? Everybody knew that, right? <laughs> a lot younger. Uh <laughs> Oh, she has she always been a brat like that? Oh yeah, <laughs> the bratty little yeah. sister. Uh, the youngest of six, so you know that explains everything. Mm. So wow, were you the youngest, Lulu? Youngest of two. Yep. Yeah, youngest of two. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It explains everything. <laughs> All right, Sheila Parks. Hello, everybody. Hey, Sheila. How you Hi, doing? Sheila. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Uh, I want to tell y'all my why is last year, July 10th, I retired from work. And I had seen Lulu's uh, YouTube thing about her weight loss and stuff, you know. And I'm 66. So, you know, she got me thinking about my, I'm on the other end now. So my health wasn't the best. My blood pressure was out of whack. I had inflammation and all that other stuff, you know. So I sat and listened to what she had to say. And I said, she's pretty much telling my story, you know. So I thought about it then and I said, I, I want to try that. So that's what I did. Because what I don't want is for my kids to have to take care of me. So I want to be able to do that for myself. And the way I was trending, it wasn't going that way. So I started the uh, weight loss program. And I'm telling you that first three weeks or two weeks, or however many weeks it was, that was the toughest time of my life. Because like Lulu, I've always started a diet. And if didn't nothing change within that week or so, you know, that you did everything right, <clears throat> I went back to what I normally did. So I had to sit down and have a come to Jesus meeting with myself. This is my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one that's got to live it. So I said, you can either stay on the same trend that you're on, or you can make it better. So that's what I decided to do. So uh, it hadn't been easy. Like I said, you know, I, we par I partnered with, with Nicole. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to her about some things because one time my granddaughter and I went to uh, the hair show, hair shop thing to get some hair products. And so on the way back, we stopped and she got some Popeye's chicken. And, you know, they had that Popeye's chicken and it was it was fresh. They had just cooked it. They had cooked fries and all of that stuff. And I told Nicole, I said, you know, that about made me then right there. I said, but my life and and I'm worth eating well. And I'm worth serving myself well. I said, I started to do it, break it. I said, but I can't. I said, and that made me stronger when you say no to something that you know is not good for you. It makes you stronger the next time you have a temptation. Mm. So I've been on this journey now since January. And me and Nicole, we talk just about every day, and we converse about different things. I've reached out to Lulu about some things, but this journey I'm on is one day at a time. And that's just how it is, but I had to change my mindset to say that I'm worth it, my life is worth it, and for me to be here for my kids, grandkids and great-grandkids, that's important to me. That's important to me. So my why is that I'm worth it. All of us are worth it. I don't care what kind of temptation you may have or how hard it is to put down a chip. 
your life is more important than a potato chip. Mm. And we don't let potato chips and cookies and all of that stuff have that much control over us. Mm. Because if we do, we will fail. We will fail. So each and every day I get up, I have a choice. Am I going to eat and serve myself well, or am I going to go back to the way that I was? Mm. And so each day I choose, I choose to serve myself well. And so with Lulu and Nicole, I am so grateful. I'm grateful for the both of you. All of y'all, really. I'm grateful for everybody on here because we're all doing this together. And no, it's not easy, but it's doable. And I'm worth it. You all are. So that's what we have to do. So that's my why. Oh, that was beautiful, Sheila. Have you been feeling a lot better since January? I feel great. Yeah. I don't have the I don't have the inflammation in my body like I did have. My joints hurt every day. And it was hard for me to walk from from my house to the mailbox because of the inflammation in my body. And I don't have that now. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad of that. I can play with my little Ava cakes and we can get down and have a good time, you know, playing with her. And, and just seeing my family and, and knowing that I can do things with my grandkids, that's important to me. That's cool. important to me. So the quality of your life has improved. Yes. Yes. Sometimes and I'm on the, other, on the other side now. And I want to enjoy the rest of my life. However long that is, I want to enjoy it. So do you find that it keeps getting easier and easier to just say no to things? Like it's just no. Yes, now the, you know, and, and there's sometimes that I see stuff and it looks so good and tastes so good, you know, whatever. But I know it's not going to serve me well if I indulge. Mm. So I, 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 I've not done wrong all this time. And to do that that one time would, you know, probably sabotage me. So I choose not to. Yeah, you so don't think so. I know that if Lulu can do it, Sheila can do it. It's just the mindset yep. that you got to be determined in your mind that I'm more important than a cookie right. or a potato chip or whatever it is that's not good for you, you know. So that's what I choose to do. And that's how I told Nicole, we on this journey now and we on the other side. And, and, and every, every first of the month that we weigh, there's so many pounds there that we don't have to carry no more. Mm. And that is helpful on your knees and everything. It makes you feel, or, or it is me. You know, mm -hmm. I can only speak for me, but yeah. Yeah. I appreciate everybody on this, on this uh, Zoom thing because everybody says something to keep you encouraged and to keep you, you know, mm -hmm. just want to fight on or, or that's how it is for me. Mm -hmm. Because if I can conquer the food thing, I can conquer the other things that are going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and that's important to me, too, because it's not just about food. It's a mindset of food, a mindset of whatever you choose to do, whether it's cleaning your house or whatever it is. Mm. You know, you got to make up your mind to do it. Mm. And that's just the bottom line. Yeah. So you're just being more, uh, you're honoring yourself. You're just, uh, you're not spending time disappointing, it, it, being disappointed in yourself because you've, failed yourself because you said you were going to do it and you didn't because oh my god I did that for years for years yeah. just disappointed yeah. in myself every day going like yeah. you shit you know I just be it was just like ah oh, you did it again you know yeah like what did yeah. you do it for it's so stupid after the fact you just kind of like why yeah. did I do that you know I just ruined exactly. everything I ruined I just broke a promise to myself you know, and it just yeah. feels so good to not do that. When you talked about yeah. food, sometimes food looking good, you know, I'm human and I can remember thing. you know, like just today, my nephew made his little boy who's six, made him an English muffin. So there it is toasted in the oven and the whole house smelled like a toasted English muffin. Now that is not a bad smell, <laughs> right? And then you throw right. the melted butter on the nooks and crannies and then I'm listening yeah. to him crunch it and I have very fond memories of what that tasted like last yeah. thing i'm going to put in my not putting that in my mouth don't it's like it's not even an option it's like right. yeah. that is 
no nutrition. It's junk. Yeah. You know? Um, but to each their own, right? So oh, they're, yeah. they're eating yeah. it. They can eat all, they can eat all that stuff. But it's like, I, I do look at stuff and think and have memories of it. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then I just say like, yep, that's in the past, along with mm -hmm. a lot of other shit that's in the past that came with yeah. it, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yes. Sure, well, that, was, that was extremely powerful. Yes. That was, um, so thank you so much for sharing that, Sheila. And you, you know, when you put yourself first and you put your health first, yeah. then you're a better person for everybody else that, that you want to serve, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, but if you, but you have to put yourself first. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself before you take care of others. That's what they say. Right. Yeah. Right. And you're doing that. And that's, and, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, you're not far from that first month where it's, it's challenging and hard. Right. So, so it's, it's still real for you. So thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Amazing. Speaking of amazing. Next up, Chris. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chris. Hi, Chris. So, you know, I um, began gaining weight in my late teens, but I was extremely active. Um, and as I went into my 20s, when, you know, you saw people around you trying to diet, I tried every fad. Um, would be on, would be off. And that went on for many years, um, up until the time that I had my daughter in 2000. And shortly after that, I was airlifted to Miami uh, with low glucose levels of over 900. I'm still walking around. And have you ever run into someone that you haven't seen for a long time that you've known to be heavy and they're suddenly looking quite trim. And some years back, I ran into someone and I said, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And he mentioned that he had come across this book written by a doctor. And it was the first time that I was really introduced to whole foods, plant-based eating. I had done veganism, but we all know that there are many foods that are vegan that are just not good for you. And so I bought the book. And, you know, up until that point, I'm relatively tall, five, nine and a half. I have big bones. And I always thought to myself, if I could get to a size 12, I'd be dynamite. So that had been my why to try to get to a size 12. I never got anywhere near it. So I've read, I read this book now and I thought, what really struck me in the book, and it was the very first time that I really thought about the nutrition in food rather than just depriving myself. And also the fact that it was this doctor's premise that diabetes could be reversed. And that got my attention because I was injecting myself with insulin twice a day and taking two diabetes oral medications and three for blood pressure, by the way. And I remember scoffing and thinking, it's probably too late for me, but I'm going to try it. Because I think in, in our journeys, we always get to this point where we're just at our wits end. What do I do now? I've tried every fad out there. I lose 30 pounds, put on 40. Next time you lose 50, you put on 70. And we've all talked about how long it takes us to try something else. And I thought, you know, I'm really going to try this. And... I went for it 100%. Uh, those first three weeks, I had to force myself to eat because nothing tasted good because I eliminated the sodium from my diet. And as a diabetic, it was most important to eliminate what you call the devil bar or the sugar. And within four and a half months, to my amazement, I had to keep reducing the insulin until my doctor said to me, this is unbelievable. Try it without insulin. Let's see what your sugars look like. And my sugars held. 
Mm. And as a byproduct, my blood pressure was coming down where I was only on one medication. And so my why became for as long as I can to not have to take insulin. That's really important to me because, you know, these things all have side effects. All these medications do, you know, it, it, it damages your kidneys, you know, that's a, that goes hand in hand with diabetes. And so that really became my why. I do not want to take insulin in my life again if I don't have to. And the byproduct was I was losing a lot of weight and feeling great. The energy was unbelievable. Because when you're walking around with your blood sugars over 200, you can barely get through the day. You get home and there's no cooking. You got to buy something on the way home. You, you just can't. I just didn't have the energy. It was just impossible. Mm. And so now I can do all these things. A lot of the pains that I have now, the neuro neuropathy is a problem, but it's so much better. That's damage that's been done over time. So even though people believe that it can be reversed, I say it's a lot better. It doesn't prevent me from hiking. You know, I'll be careful climbing on a ladder because, you know, you don't always feel so well. But my why is not just to feel the best that I can, but also motivated by not taking insulin. And so, Carol, I know it's hard, but also preparation is really important also. You know, so even if you put those things out for your, for your card game, put out the things that are good for you. Today, you know, I go into the office on Thursdays and we always order lunch. And so they were ordering from their a barbecue joint and a young lady comes and says, uh, Miss Chris, you don't want anything? And I said, no, you see my lunch box is here. She said, you don't want anything? I said, I don't need anything. I have everything that I'm going to eat in this lunch box. And it's just, no, I'm ready to face the day. You can eat anything, and their barbecue did smell really good. But I was happy with my meal. It was spiced the way I liked it, and I know I was full and satiated at the end. I had my huge bowl of salad. I separated it because I can't fit a big enough bowl in my lunchbox to do the plates that we do. And I had it like two courses. And I'm prepared, and I recognize that I have to be prepared. You know, when I first started the journey, when I read this doctor's book, and he, you know, he had a lot of fantastic recipes. Those videos and how simple she made it, I realized I don't have to do all these fantastic recipes. I am too busy. It's too much work. Once in a while, I may want to try something that's different, but having my stuff prepped and ready, I pick the things that I enjoy eating that are good for me, that are going to serve me well, and I eat them. If I get tired of it in two weeks, I switch them up. I buy different vegetables. And so I try to keep it fresh that way rather than having to try to cook something every single day because everyone knows themselves. And I know that, that for me, that would be setting myself up to come home too hungry to eat what I need to eat that's good for me and snatching something from somebody else's cupboard in the house. So mm. that's my why and my motivation. Mm. That's amazing, Chris. Really amazing. And Chris, so how long have you been off the, um, the insulin now? I've been off insulin now two and a half years. Fantastic. At my heaviest, when I started, I was 292 pounds. Yep. Mm. So at, at our last weigh I was 197.4, I think. So, yeah. And your body can heal itself. I believe that. I believe yeah. that wholeheartedly. Yeah. And, and also, so, yeah, I would, I'd love to see your neuropathy go away. And it could. It just might be one of those things that takes a little bit longer time. I think so. I mean, it's, it's really night and day uh to what it used to be i i couldn't just normally sit here now without feeling you know terrible pain shooting off in my feet you know i have numbness more than pain now yeah so yeah. you know I, i'm happy with where i am where i'm going believing that the neuropathy will continue to improve as i get to you know my most healthy weight and i'm good life is good life is good because i've taken steps to make it better 
So we we share the name of the book. I'm just curious. Sure. I think it's called Eat to Live. It's by a Dr. Joel Furman. You know what I was thinking, Chris, when you were talking about that that mm -hmm. meeting at work and you had the, the barbecue and your packed lunch. I just thought like you either have that packed lunch and be free of your health issues or you have the barbecue with a little side of insulin. Correct. And, you know, like you said, I don't want to be angry know. with myself. Yeah. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be angry later. It's like, how can that, and, you know, how can that barbecue be worth a shot of insulin? when you just got yeah. yourself off it, like, do you want it back? Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. 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 Nope. Good for you. That's, that's, just, that's, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. That's a great why. So your why is, is, is health, but specifically, you know, to get off the meds that you are on. And yeah. to get up and to stay off of that medication, I have to focus on health. So it's health, but there's a, is a goal that fuels that health. Right. challenge so yeah right because yeah what do you what do you you want to spend the rest of your life in and out of doctor's appointments all the time and managing these prescriptions and stuff it's like mm -hmm. who wants to do that that yeah. takes that and then and then that takes a lot of time for me i'd rather spend my time in the kitchen steaming some veggies and baking some chicken mm -hmm. and instead of saying oh mm -hmm. i don't have time to do that I don't have time to not do that <laughs> because right. if I'm not spending the time on that food, then I'm spending the time in other food. And plus I'm spending time in my head and then I'm going to spend time at the doctor and I'm going to spend time hating myself. And you know, it just mm -hmm. spirals me, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I've seen it too many times. So yeah, I'm kind of yeah. all set with that for now. Thanks for sharing, Chris. Appreciate it. Yes, excellent. Awesome. All right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, iPhone is up, but I don't know who that is. So maybe you can introduce yourself. Okay, sorry. I've been sitting here to find all the little buttons because actually I was going to unraise my hand because I was like, I can't follow those two ladies. Wow, y'all, that was some kind of impressive and powerful. Um, but my why, I think my biggest why is, <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to get emotional about this. Y'all triggered me. Um, last year, I had, I was feeling bad a few days, and I was like confused, felt confusion and different things. And then long story short, I went out to eat to Ruby Tuesdays on a Wednesday night. I'm sitting there eating. I thought, it's not my, I keep thinking I need to eat. I'm tired. I was trying to come up with all these reasons about what was wrong with me. And I had the thought, maybe I should check my blood pressure. So I went over to Walmart and checked it and it said, see the pharmacist. And I'm thinking, okay, that's not good. And it was also much higher than my blood pressure has ever been. I've always had low blood pressure, low heart rate, that kind of thing. Um, so I, went and talked to the pharmacist and he goes, Oh, well go try it two more times, take the average and, you know, see what it says. And now I'm very anxious. So each one is worse than the one before. And it was too late to go to urgent care. So I ended up going to um, the emergency room. And when I got there, it was like 200 over something. I don't remember the bottom number. And um, they put me in a room. It was nice and cool. They had music. I sat there and relaxed and my blood pressure went down to normal. And the doctor came in and they were going to send me home. And I said, well, listen, can you just give me the lowest blood pressure medicine you have? Because if this happens to me again, I don't want to have to come back because that was $2,500 folks. Um, and so he did and I got them and I didn't want to take them and all of that backstory I'm going to cut through now. Um, I feel like it was work related stress but the catalyst was probably also aging and you know i've gained weight and i'm bigger than i've ever been in my life my nicknames when i was little and for many years was skinny mini and being pole you have one stripe on your pajama i just never struggled with that um there was a couple other times in my life uh, that i did gain some weight and i lost them um and now i've gained the weight uh, feel like I think I was looking back and since COVID happened, I probably gained 10 pounds a year. So in three years, I've gained 30 pounds. 
In fact, I should go back and look because um, when I, I actually do a different plan slightly than Lulu's, it's very similar, but Lulu is the catalyst that got me there. I watched her um, and, you know, videos and talk about food. And of course, I'd already been thinking about all this, knowing I need to do this, but not. And then finally, I don't even really know why I can't tell you beginning of February sometime, I said, okay, I've got to try to start doing something. And um, so my why was the blood pressure. And I could tell when I would be working and I would get stressed out, I could have all those feelings coming back. And for a while, I was taking my blood pressure like multiple times a day. And I realized the past few days, y'all, I'm not thinking about my blood pressure and I'm not measuring my blood pressure. And it's because I've lost the weight. So I have other changes I need to make in life, but um, I've lost the weight that was the catalyst and probably the beginning point, you know, for a lot of other things to follow. So that's my why, healthy. I'm not going to lie. I feel ecstatic that this year I'm thinking I don't, um, last year I was miserable in a swimsuit. Actually, by those swimsuits, you know, that push your tummy in and all this kind of stuff. It was so awful. I cut it out of the swimsuit. Okay. And, um, I'm looking forward to this year, like, okay, I'm not going to feel like that. And I also feel better because I know I'm helping myself and I'm doing the best for myself that I can. And I'm making the needed changes physically, um, and nutritionally that I need to make as a step in the right direction. Oh, thank you so much. What was your name again? Bonnie. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Thank you for sharing. But, um, yeah, that's, 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 um, that's scary, that blood pressure, that thing. And now that it's you, very, yeah, but I'm better. And I know, Good. you know, uh, this, the stress sometimes I do have to learn to manage the stress, but I believe the weight gain on top of it, along with all the other factors, aging mm -hmm. and different things like this. But that weight was the tipping point, evidently, is what I feel. And yes. I needed to get it down anyway. Um, I didn't feel good. I didn't want to get dressed. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want anyone to see me because I look so much different than I've ever looked. Nobody knows who I am. And if they, you know, do, then they're so shocked. And um, I was also having, like, some shortness of breath. I remember, you know, going out and working in the yard. I have these oak trees. They drop stuff all the time. So I was out there picking up and I probably had eaten, but that's irrelevant really because if you're overweight, if you're not overweight and you're eating the right things, this does not happen because I've had the, I've done it since then. And I went over there and as I would lean over, I went, Barb, I had really bad acid reflex and I was taking over-the-counter meds every day, sometimes twice a day. I'm not taking those anymore. I don't need them. I'm not having it, but I would lean over and I, I had the thought, man, I hope I don't have a heart attack out here. And then I'm thinking if I do, who's going to find me because I'm in my fenced in backyard, you know? And anyway, it was awful to feel like that and have those thoughts. And I feel a tremendous, um, you know, uh, benefit to my health and also my, my physical as well as my mental. Yeah. So oh. I, very much Lulu for putting all those, keep putting those videos on YouTube and you're dancing and everything. When I first found you on there and I had a friend that was visiting, I said, you have to see this. Look at this lady. She has it going on, you know, look at the age, which I'm the same age, you know, but the fact that you just are a free spirit and you get yeah. out there and you do it and you're having fun and you're loving life. Yeah. It's very inspirational. That's wonderful. Thank you. That's a great story, and to have yeah. such a wake-up call is so powerful, right? Yeah. With the, um, the blood pressure. Yes. Yeah, that's um, that that that'll that'll wake you up and put you in the right direction. I think. Mm. It, yes, it was a you know, point of no return, and I even tell my daughter, and my daughter has she has a different body build than me, and she took off of her dad's side of the family, and they struggle with their weight. And now here I've gained all this weight and everything. And I said, I just, it just feels like it's so impossible that I can't do it. And I don't know what I'm going to do about getting this blood pressure under control. She goes, you can do it. So anyway, mm. I have done it. Good. Um, I'm see how much I've lost. 
I do weigh every day and I track uh, once a week. I record that weight, but I'm not going to tell y'all for a whole entire month. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so you'll be here after the first of, after the first of May. What day of the week? What day of the week is May 1st? Does anybody know? Hold on. I'll find it. Uh, it's a Wednesday. Oh, so, okay. So it'll be the day before our, our, our meeting. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's the idea for you. Um, yeah, that's, you know, and I know how you feel about that reflux because it almost feels like a heart attack, doesn't it? It does. It was awful. Scary. Mm-hmm. I felt so sick and I'm sure you felt the same way. That's just, that's the worst. So, and did your body heal itself when you started eating healthy and you no longer have reflux? You said that, right? Well, when I eat, I call it lean and clean. I don't have that. Um, you know, yeah. when I was very far off of lean and clean, you know, last week you talked about triggers and I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know that I have any triggers. And I forgot that the weekend is my trigger. And I actually set my um, weekly weigh in day as Sunday on purpose because I knew if I didn't, and I would normally would make it like Friday. Okay. And then I'm going to treat myself over the weekend a little bit here and there and then I can make it up again before I have to weigh again next Friday I said no I'm gonna make it on Sunday this is gonna force me to go through the whole entire weekend without my treats and it is difficult sometimes um I you know because I'll be tired and I'll be like or if I have a negative emotion I'll be like you know used to I could treat myself with food but that's not gonna happen anymore so gonna have to learn to deal with it a different way and you know years ago I smoked and it was kind of the same thing um when I feel like it was a miracle that I was able to stop smoking but I realized I also had a part to play in it um because a couple of times I would see somebody who's smoking and I would zero in on that cigarette going to their mouth and down and and I go oh give me a drag and I'd take a drag and that happened like two or three times of, you know, within a few months. And the last time I said, if I put this to my mouth again, I will never be able to put it down. And I realized what I would start doing is every time I was thinking I wanted a cigarette, it would only take me a minute. If I would get my mind off and do something else within a minute to five minutes, I wouldn't even be thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's the Good same, the triggers, I make it through, um, you know, I, I, I want to tell you this because Lulu, you'll find it funny, but at the same time you won't, but it's my reality. I'd be like, I kind of feel sorry for these restaurants. I don't patronize anymore. You know, like they're having to do without my business, but you know what? I have to take care of me first. I'm sure a lot of restaurants and convenience stores and liquor stores went out of business in my area when I, 10 years ago. <laughs> Bonnie, thank you so much for sharing. Yes, yes, well, thank you. All right, Nicole. Nicole from Minnesota. Nicole, you look like a different person. Your face, you just, you look, look at her it's face. Me. It's me. Well, you know, I will say that I, um, you know, I was texting uh, Sheila my breakfast and I had blackberries. And, and, and she said, oh, they look delicious and plump, nice and plump. And I wrote back kind of like me. And then she wrote, because she's a good, she's a good lady. She said, no, ma'am, that's not us. That was us. So turn that mindset, lady. We on another journey. <laughs> and so she doesn't even like kidding about it. But um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, um, I don't know. I feel, you know, I feel, I can't really see it. I can feel it in my clothes. But I will tell you that um, this all this stuff just makes me want to weep my eyes out because it is so familiar to me. Mm. Like, you know, I, I've already mentioned in the past, you know, when I came across Lulu and her pink and white striped shirt talking about her weight loss journey, I was doing, I was taking pictures of the TV with my, my phone because I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get, if I lose this, you know, I gotta get back to her because um, she's, it just resonated with me. But my why is really, I've had amazing health, you know, really great numbers, all that. Um, but I know I was pushing my luck, you know, 
Um, I see, saw my grandma struggle, you know, once she sort of started to get a little bit older, like getting out of the chair, things like that. And I could like, I identify with my grandma so much. I could just see my future. Um, if I could make it that far, you know, and I th I've mentioned before too, like I'm five, two and a half and my highest weight was 312. And that's just astronomical for that kind of a frame, you know, but I'm an emotional eater and I ate, I ate all my emotions my whole life, you know, since I was really pretty much a teenager. And I, I could just see the future, like it's not going to be good. And I felt terrible, you know, and the thing is, is when I was like, when I was in my forties, I lost a lot of weight down to 186 and I touched it and started climbing back up. And October, when I started, well, it was November, October 29th, I got on the scale and I was 281. And I thought, you are getting really close to scary top again. Mm -hmm. And it, I didn't even know, I knew it wouldn't even take me that long, you know, because I'm really great at, at gaining weight. And I thought in a few months, I'm going to be devastated because then I'll be back there or worse. And and I, I had really had to have a come to Jesus meeting, you know, Lulu prompted it by just speaking the truth through the screen. Um, and really said pointed things like is the taste of that like Weight Watchers treat or whatever that's chemicals and sugar is that really come on, you know, and I thought, do I want to keep abusing myself with food and, and take it, take this path that I can see what's going to happen to me? Or do I can I turn around? You know, and can I do it? Can I hang on and do it? Because I wasn't even sure if I could. But here's this lady who was doing it and did it for almost 10 years at that point. And I'm like, well, she's doing it. But am I willing to do what the things she had to do? And I had to sort of mini grieve them. It didn't take long, but like, oh, now that means I can't do that. Or I can't. It was all can'ts, not don'ts, because I hadn't started it yet. And it was like, oh, I don't know, you know, I don't know, but it wouldn't leave me for like three days. It weighed on me. Like, what's your decision going to be? Because you know, you're at a crossroads. You're either going to struggle the rest of your life, you know, mm -hmm. and fight off the cravings and feel terrible and, and get on a plan, grasp for a diet, or you're going to, you're going to do it. And I, it was hard to just think that I could do it because I, I had never done it before successfully. And I knew this was different. This wasn't going to end. So it's not just like, oh, I'm going to go on a plan, drop some weight, and then be careful. Mm. But it really came uh -huh. down to you guys, just me saying to myself, what do you want? And are you really going to do it? And is your body a trash can or not? Mm. And the answer was no, you know, I've put a lot of junk in my body, food, and I've lived with abandon when it comes to food, but no, my body is not a trash can and I deserve better than that. And I want to live healthfully and I want to be around. I want to, you know, I want to show up like for all the things and it not just be about, you know, what am I going to eat here? <laughs> you know, and then go home feeling kind of sick. Um, and boy, that was a good time, you know, because my focus was food and snacks and, oh, that's wonderful. You made that cake or, oh, you know, yay, potato salad. Um, and food equaled love for so long for me. Like, it's just, you know, what I did. And so stopping that, I thought, obviously I haven't been successful at it until now. And now I don't, I will never stop this. I feel it in my bones, you know, so I feel it like, um, it's like I put on a new coat and this is the coat I'm wearing, you know, it's comforting, it's comforting, truly comforting to take care of yourself, to say no to the things that are bad and yes to the things that are good. And so, you know, I'm just kind of wrapped in, in this, this feeling like it isn't just a feeling it's, it's feelings and actions you know, I'm doing it. And once you start doing it, you have it, you know, um, and it, it'll, it will come. So I sort of feel like excited, like this is such a relief, you know, to not think I have to fight cravings and food the rest of my life. Mm. You know, I've made a decision 
for my health and my happiness. And it's it, like I've said before, it's gold to me. So, you know, I, um, I just encourage you if you're having trouble or you're thinking it's kind of hard and you're in the beginning, you're right. It is, but you can get through it. And Barb, like you said, your sister is super close and it is, you know, that first period of time, like when I got really close, it only took a couple of things and a little bit of encouragement, um, from Lulu and this group. And it's like, okay, it's time to flip that pancake. You know, that's probably a bad analogy, but, um, uh, you know, you make it over and then it's all about serving yourself well and protecting that for yourself. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really my why I don't want to finish my life out, you know, however long it is, I would like to get to be very, very old, but I don't want to finish it out in pain and at doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. And I could feel that coming because with that amount of weight on my body, you just know it's like a time bomb waiting to go off. So, um, people think it's weird. Yeah, they do. Or they question it. Like we talked about last week, but I'm happy to do, you know, the explaining um, to the people I love and be on my journey. It's precious. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my why. You know, my my grandmas who were so important to me were both really overweight. My Swedish grandma used to go to this thing called Tops, take off pounds sensibly. And I have some of her pictures and they're so cute. They're all these chubby ladies. They wore birthday type hats at these meetings. I don't know why. And and I, I when she was alive, I said, I love these pictures. What is this? Is it a birthday party? She's like, oh, no, that was Tops. And then I learned about what that was when I was like, you know, 14. And they were they all had cake. And I'm like, well, why do you guys all have cake? And she's like, well, the meeting was over. You know, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, um, but grandma struggled with that. Grandma struggled with weight her whole life, you know, and um, she always had crazy diets in her cupboard, the grapefruit diet, the cabbage diet, the whatever, you know, eat a banana and a hot dog diet. And, um, you know, I think, it, it, you know, I feel like we've gotten a secret, a simple secret, which is sugar. Sugar is bad for us. You know, it's addictive. Um, but then also self care and not doing self abuse. My other grandma, my Mexican grandma, she, I think I mentioned before, she, she would go to Weight Watchers and I'd go with her just because after Weight Watchers was Dairy Queen. I didn't have a weight, real weight problem, but I knew after that meeting, we got to go out to Dairy Queen because she wanted to get the treat in so she'd have the whole week to work it off. You know, so I, I got some messages from my, my grandmas about bodies and dieting and that you just had to keep feeding away at it you know, because that was, that would be the solution. But I think all of us who kind of are on this journey know that the previous solutions were temporary. Mm. So, you know, this truly is lasting. Lulu proves it, um, that, you know, the proof is in the pudding and, um, that's, that's really kind of what I want for myself and what I want for, for all of us here, you know? So yeah, that's my way. Oh, Nicole. <laughs> oh Nicole my yeah. body's not a trash can I could mm -hmm. not have said that better yeah wow. and a lot of years of treating it treating it like I was a trash can you know yeah and, yep. it's, and, it's, and I found it interesting when you said uh, you know people think it's weird and when you really think about it it's like you know don't you think it would be more weird if I was just sitting here like eating 15 pastries? Like you wouldn't think that was weird? You know, like, like I, you know, it's like eating well is just not what most people are doing. The majority of people. That's why, you know, 75% of the grocery store is not even food. It's just, it's food, but it's just you know, all pro Everything. processed and just unrecognizable ingredients, you know, probably 75% of the grocery store, wouldn't you say? A lot of it. And so it's like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, you know, however, however, if, if anybody thinks what I'm doing is strange today, I don't even notice anymore. <laughs> I don't even notice. 
Because it's like, to me, it's like, it's strange that you think this is strange. That's what, that's what I would think. Because <laughs> it's really not that strange. Like I'm eating vegetables and, and meat and, a, and some rice and it's delicious and it's a meal. What's so strange about it? <laughs> you know? But I don't know. It serves me well. I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm in it. I'm in it. You know, and I... I I hope to God I'm doing this for the rest of my life because if I'm not, if I don't, if I, if I, and I mean, I could slip like anybody else slips, you know, um, I don't think I'm going to, but, um, you know, I'm not like afraid of it happening, but I'm not like, oh, this will never happen to me, you know, um, it will be a sorry day because I'll lose my peace. Yep. It will be gone. So Yeah. And Nicole, you know, something that you said, um, for so long food was love, right? You mm -hmm. said food equaled love, you said, I think. And you know, I think it still can equal love. And that the food that you're choosing now is actually even more love, right? Because you're you're offering people healthy options. So, and, and then whatever they choose, they choose, but you know, you're, 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 that's what you're offering. Right. So, um, I love that. It's actually, it's, it's this, this kind of food is true love, you know, that's right. This kind of food yeah. is true love. Oh. Yeah. That's even better. That's even better. You're a rock star. Uh, thank you for coming along with us. And I have to tell you, and I don't, I don't, I'm not just blowing smoke up, up the chimney. Isn't that a nice way to say it? <laughs> uh, you said you were over 40. I'm 55 and a half. I honestly would say, I thought you were in your thirties. I oh swear to God. Oh my goodness sakes. You have have to, to, you is have this being to, recorded? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, I did not. I would not put you at 55. You have very good genes. Your genetics are good or your camera's good. One or the other. <laughs> it's just my standard laptop. I'll take. Are you forward. using a filter? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I wish. Well, no, I will look. say I will. Thank you. That's very sweet. Um, yeah. I do yeah. have kind of good genes, I think. Um, but um, my husband, he had to leave to go do something, but he's, he sent me this little, he sent me this little note before he left and just says, your source of a higher power is the Lulu group. Now I do have a higher power God, but you know, isn't that sweet? He just is like, I love you after Lulu group. You're so like, you're like so happy. And I'm like, yes, because I'm getting what I need. You know, I'm getting what fuels me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I just well, love all you guys. Right? Well, the, the whole, whole week. week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even yeah. though like I'm in the maintenance mode, this group affects me and, and, and keeps me on the, the helps me stay on the path of wellness. It's, it's an amazing group. And it keeps strengthening hey, what I do too. It keeps strengthening what I do too. Yep. You know? Yep. Oh and yeah. Yep. You guys are stuck with me for life. And Angie from California, you are up. Hi, Angie. Hi. Hi. Thank you, guys. I wanted to first just say thank you so much for accepting me into the group. I'm pretty much brand new. I joined last week and did the Zoom. And I want you to know that I just love all of you already. I can just sit here and look at all your faces. And Chris, your story last week touched me so much when you were talking about uh, I had to get flown in and all that. It's just on, on Sunday, you guys saved me because I was out and about on errands. And as I have normally done on ups and downs of diets my entire life, I thought, oh, I can just cheat today. I've done really, really good. And I'm out by myself. So I'll go get some nachos and a margarita by myself away from home and enjoy. And I thought, you know, no, all those beautiful ladies and their testimonies and I just said no. So I told my sister I'm on a no diet, no <laughs> alcohol, no sugar, no chips, um, no flour, and I'm just knowing it. And so um, I even texted her and I said, I really want a glass of wine. Damn it. I don't, but I don't drink alcohol. Damn it. Right. 
I'm just <laughs> able to say no, no, no. And that is different than I've ever done. I, I have obsessed over food my entire life. Um, it is was taking up so much of the real estate in my head from mm. the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Mm. And with no, it just really doesn't. It just, no, I just don't. I'm not that Angie anymore. I'm Angie who is whole food plant-based and I'm kind of leaving it at that. I'm just kind of whole food plant-based and I eat good food into my body because I'm just starting to love myself. Mm. And I just want to say, you know, Lulu, I found you because of the van stuff. And I was watching all your videos and I go, what's she talking about now about weight loss? What, what the hell this lady, what, what's she doing now? And I popped over there and was like, oh my gosh. And there's a group of women because I had put out to the universe. What I would really like is a group of women who are, you know, seasoned and have been through life a little bit and who I can talk to and, and, you know, be in community with. And there you were. So just mm. thank you. Thank you. Um, my why my, I just turned 60 in March and my mom died at 60 suddenly. Um, my father was in a wheelchair by 82 and I just thought, I just, it just cannot be my reality. It just cannot be. And so I'm going to love on me for the rest of my life. So I can uh, love on others and others can see how I love on me so they can love on themselves too. So you guys are a blessing. It makes me cry. You guys are a blessing. It's right at the right time in my life. Oh. I usually work on Thursday afternoons in California. This starts at three. And so uh, I'm going to really try to make it here because um, I, Chris, I think it was you last week. There was like, someone says like, if you, if you wouldn't ask someone to not go to their AA meeting, would you? Mm -hmm. Right? No, no. So hopefully I'll be able to be here with you guys on a regular basis, but just blessings and thank you. And I really, really am thankful to be here. Oh, thank you. I'm so grateful you're here. That was a, that was wonderful. I'm just mm. just so grateful, so grateful that you're on the no diet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're also on the yes diet because you're saying yes to a lot of good things. Exactly, and it's all better. And I've yeah. got more energy. It's been it's only been about two weeks now, but yeah. I have more energy now and yeah than I in quite a long time. Yeah, it's just amazing how food choices can drag you down really mm -hmm. it's just really the power of it the power of it yeah mm -hmm. so glad you're here so glad you're yeah. here. and you know mm -hmm. I wasn't planning on have having a YouTube channel about food really <laughs> I was just a, an old lady in a van you know and uh and um but what do you do in the van you you I I cook and I just I just was just eating the way that I eat and people just started asking questions about it so I was just answering the questions and now that's kind of exploded, you know? Well, you are on your purpose, my friend. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's funny because I'm like, you know, my YouTube channel is kind of really scattered. Like I'm just like, I'm doing like everything. And I think, and anybody that's has a YouTube channel, they always say, you know, find your niche. Like you just, you want to have like a focus on one thing, but you know something I'm not, this is not a business. I'm retired. You know what I mean? I'm retired. I don't work. And so I just do whatever the heck I want. If I want to put a cowboy hat on and dance, I will. If I want to cook kale, I will. If I want to mold the lawn, I will. And I can just video whatever I want, you know? And, um, you know, I'm not trying to figure out like what my audience wants if it doesn't match up to me, you know? Um, I just want to just do what I want to do. Um, but what I want, and you know, this kind of stuff is my passion. So when people were showing an interest in it, I was just like, well, well, I guess this all just worked out perfect, you know? So. Well, thank you for showing up. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. For and showing thank up you too. so much. And you know, just, just eating the whole food and plant-based. I mean, that's just, that's just it, right? That's, you know, well, some people enjoy meat and that's fine. Others don't, and that's fine. But the whole food portion of it is just what what makes it work. And why 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 haven't we been doing this sooner? Is a good question. But we're here now, mm. and that's all that matters, right? Don't worry about the past. I'm so glad you're here too, Angie. Mm. Um, yeah, this group is impactful for everybody. 
And okay. I also and I also feel like uh, all the the trauma of of my past with food is a part of why I'm so um, committed today. So you know, I don't know that I would have this level of commitment without all that pain, you know, all that suffering, all that discontentment, you know. So. Yeah, I don't I don't regret any of it. Everything just happens right on time. I always say everything happens right on time. So and yep. you know, all we have is today. So I just don't want to mess up today. You know? Yep. I'm just gonna keep today clean and then I get tomorrow, then it's always today. <laughs> it's just today, you know. All right. Thank you so much again. All right, so Sherry from Seattle. Hi everybody. Hi Sherry. I'm going don't typically talk a lot. I'm a little bit, um, never mind. So <laughs> I, oh, Angie, I wanted to, something you said, the no, the no diet or something, you know, that reminded me when 39 years ago, I quit smoking and I had tried to quit smoking so many times. And I had always had sort of this way of saying, I'm quitting. I'm trying to quit. I'm quitting. And it didn't work. I mean, I always ended up smoking again, one way or another. And the, when I quit, I had, I approached it differently. I said, I don't smoke. Mm. And there were friends and family who said, yes, you do. And I said, no, I don't smoke. And they just, I wouldn't say I'm quitting mm. or I quit. I just said, I don't smoke. <laughs> and I'm sure they thought you are so weird, but <laughs> That is what I did. And it's been 39 years and I don't miss, I will never, you know, I know never say never, but cigarettes, gross. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to, but also I wanted to ask a favor. I I went on a walk with a friend today and she, she watches these, Lulu, when you post these, um, and so do I, when I can't make it to the healthy life uh, meetups and so I want to say hi Brandy mm -hmm. and <laughs> I was telling her on our walk you know I have got to get organized every I keep trying to uh eat Lulu's way and I don't have the right food at the right time and I don't have the, I can't put a, together a healthy meal I need to know a week I need to put together a whole week's plan of meals and I, I put it in the chat here too earlier today. Um, and I, I, you know, what that all fits into Lulu's eating group, because I know I can do this. I went to the doctor uh, maybe six or seven years ago. My doctor told me uh, my cholesterol was getting on the high end and I needed to be careful. She could put me on a statin and I said, oh, please, what can I do to not start, not take a pill? And she said, I said, what is cholesterol? And she said, basically dairy and meat. And I stopped eating dairy and meat. I don't eat dairy and meat. And my cholesterol went to normal. So I figure if I can quit smoking and I can quit dairy and meat, I can do this and get on a, in, instead of eating one meal, and um, like I think it was Chris that said, there are vegan foods that are not good for you. Mm -hmm. Did you know potato chips, many potato chips have zero cholesterol. <laughs> so I feel it gives me the permission to eat junk food. So I can do this. I just have to get organized. And so I was wondering if you have a meal, any meal that is on Lulu's plan, that fits into Lulu's plan, food plan that you would be willing to share on Facebook. It would help me. Maybe I can get enough to put together a week's worth of meals and get me started. <laughs> I, that was, that yeah. was all I had. That, yeah. You know, it's, if, if that's what you need for ideas, yeah. Putting meals together for me, I'm just like, I just kind of assemble meals. So like, I just make sure I have lots of veg that are cooked or, Either that or I have lots of salad items in that I know I can get 16 ounces. And then I always make sure, like just before this meeting, I had my dinner at five. I was done by about maybe 20, 25 past. And I was like, oh, I have like a half an hour. So I put some, I cooked up some cauliflower rice. 
I cooked up a couple of zucchinis and I'm not eating them because I've already eaten my dinner. I'm done for the night, but that's all set. That's cooling in there. I'll put those in the fridge and those are for tomorrow. Now I have, I'm low on proteins, cooked proteins. I just have, I have just enough. I don't think even for one more meal. So, um, when I get up tomorrow morning, I'll have my breakfast and then I'm going to throw some chicken in the oven and then I'm going to throw some haddock in the oven and then I'll just have a big, the whole package, the whole packages. And then I just have all that and that will take me the next few days. So I just, what I do is this, the way that I do meals is like, and also my sweet potatoes were low this afternoon when I, uh, before, before I left to go to my nephew's, I had a half an hour. I cooked some rice, had that cooling, put that in the fridge. So I'm just always kind of, I just find those little pockets of time to just kind of stay ahead of my, my prep, you know? And, um, as soon as I see myself, I'm determined. yeah, I'm determined to get good at it. Like you, <laughs> so whatever you're going to put together as a meal, it would be the things that you like. So do you like rice or do you like potatoes? Do you like sweet potatoes? You know, or do you like quinoa, all the different, so whatever, whatever you enjoy, just have that. And then as soon as you see it gets low, you start, you just make some more. And I, I don't do much cooking, like when it's time for a meal, I don't want to, I want, I want to assemble and I just use a big pie plate. So it will go right in the oven and I can heat the whole thing up and uh, just put, drizzle my oil on it. I don't cook in any oil. And um, that's the way that I do meals. Um, but you know, if you, if, uh, on the Facebook group, if you could just say, you know, Sherry here from last night and looking for meal ideas, I bet you, um, many people here would love to share their ideas with you. Thank you. Just, Lulu. You just get the scale, I will get there. just get the scale, watch your portions and just keep everything plain and then, you know, dress it up later, you know, put the, put some seasonings and salt and pepper and oil and, and uh, every meal that I have, I just love, you know, and um, oh, those grains. Every That's meal you show looks delicious. Yeah. Every meal I have seen you eat looks delicious to me. <laughs> and it is. And it's really just, you know, that the, I think the last meal that I had on a video was just a mishmash of leftover stuff. It was like I had a little bit of rice left over. So I had rice in the potato bits because I was really low on one and then had more of the other. And then I had, it was just like some chicken and some, I was just, it was just, a, as long as it all just weighs what it needs to weigh, it works for me, you know? And, um, um, you know, so basically it's just a combination at the end of the day, it's a combination of the foods that you enjoy. Do you like chicken? Do you like fish? If you like fish, what do you like? Do you like cod? Do you like haddock? Do you like salmon? Do you like shrimp? Do you like whatever you like and just have it, have it cooked and prepared. If you don't mind heating it up, I don't mind heat ups. I have to find out too, if, because I'm vegan, because I don't eat oh, dairy oh, or okay. meat, I have to figure out like what proteins is it the same amount? Is it still four ounces well, of something? No. Uh, so, um, I was, uh, I ate a, a strict 100% vegan diet for 22 years. And, and, and I have been eating, uh, I w was advised, um, to change my diet into, um, eating some chicken, fish and eggs. And after much consideration and it was a painful decision, but I decided to make the change. And that was less than two years ago. So I've been on this food plan as a vegan for many years. Wow. And there's a lot, you just look at the list, everything except for the cheeses and the yogurt and the meat and you don't eat fish or poultry eggs, right? I don't eat eggs. Yeah. So all of that stuff, I didn't either. None of it ever. Even before I started this food plan, even as a, you know, actively eating, because like Chris said, vegan doesn't mean skinny mini. <laughs> right. Doesn't mean healthy it food. Doesn't mean healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was getting every version of every pastry that was n not made with dairy. You can find them all at whole foods. <laughs> I was in whole foods, bakery, vegan chocolate chip cookies, vegan. It's, it's all sugar. It's all sugar, right? Um, potato chips. Oh, till they were coming out of my ears, French fries. 
Not onion rings though, because the batter, the batter has the egg, so I wouldn't touch those. It was, it, I would, this is how strange I am. So this is my story. Okay. But I ate beans. I ate six ounces of beans. If you look at the food plan, do you have a copy of the food plan? Yes. Okay. Yes. I do you, have it taped on my pantry door. So look at the, <laughs> look at the protein servings. It will say hummus, okay. hummus, four ounces, beans, six ounces, nuts and seeds, two ounces, tofu, whatever that is. Um, four ounces, I think. Oh, is tofu on your too? Yeah. It okay. should be right on that list. Okay. And, um, tempeh, you know, and then veggie burgers. If you can find veggie burgers that don't have sugar or flour in it, it's not easy to find. But once you put some time and effort into finding them, they, they are processed food. But, you know, if you wanted to have veggie burgers, I, would, I, I can't even remember what brand I found that didn't have sugar or flour. But I would have them once in a while. But um, uh, that's on there. So, and then everything else on the food plant is all vegan. All the grains and all the, the fruit and all the veggies and the oils. Yeah. So it's just, so you do have now when you think I have beans. Okay. How many kinds of beans are there? Like 50 or a hundred. So there's your variety. And That's how many, any bean. Any beans. And how about, um, you know, edamame. Edamame is, is, uh, would be a bean. And then like the, um, uh, the, uh, hummus comes in tons of flavors. And you just, I used to make a salad and then I would make a little well in the, in the middle of it, push it all apart and just put a big scoop of hummus right in the middle. And I would just take, I my, take my fork and I would just take a, a little bit of hummus and then stab some lettuce. And it was just, I, I still have that, you know, so it's definitely doable for a vegan. I've been a fat vegan. I've been a thin vegan. I've been a unhealthy vegan and I've been a healthy vegan. So, um, but I've just made this choice for myself just only the past two years. Thank you. Yep. You're the best. Thank you. Is that helpful? Very. And feel free to email me with, any, right. with any questions. Uh, if you have my email address. Thank any, you. Any kind I of questions. Okay. Any kind of questions that you might have about eating vegan on this diet? Cause it's easy breezy. Thank Thanks you so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, you're welcome. Adriana. Hi, Adriana. Hi, how are you? Good, how are Good. you? Good. I feel like I feel like I've I've gotten to know both of you so well. Good. <laughs> um, just a couple of quick things because I know it's late. But uh number one, uh I have spent my whole life being a cute little roly poly baby, an adorable toddler, and then uh oh. And then have spent the rest of my life, and I'm 77, um, fighting, fighting this battle, mm. and probably trying every diet that was out there, some numerous times, some pretty crazy. But in the end, uh, I, my cousin and I, I, I said to her during the holidays, I said, do you think that we could talk about eating and weight after the holidays? And she said, yes. And we spent almost two full days. She had followed you, Lulu, for a while. And she said, I think you need to look at this. And I was skeptical, to be honest, because I know everything that I need to know about what to eat properly. But I did, and I was um, hopeful at first. I started this process with my cousin January 10th, and I've lost 40 pounds so far. Nice. Following, yeah. Um, I, I, and probably the most miraculous thing is not the numbers, it's how I feel. Yeah. Um, that for once in my life, I am choosing, and, and this is redundant with other people have said, but it's the same thing. For once in my life, I feel like I'm choosing how and what I'm going to do with my body and consequently yeah. with my feelings and my life. And I can't thank you enough. One of the first times I listened to you, someone called and was lamenting the fight with the scale. She'd get on and she lost weight and so she would reward herself with food. She'd get off, she'd, try, she'd weigh herself, she'd gain weight, she would get off and console herself with food. And you looked quietly and said, 
the food has no um, emotional connection here. If the scale is just for information. And that was like a thunderbolt to me. Mm. <laughs> of course, the scale has no power. The scale is giving you information. Somehow that freed me oh. tremendously to understand that. Mm. And, and I, I so thank you for that. I've never forgotten it. And when I get on the scale, I say that. I am doing this for information. It is. It, it really is amazing how those few words went. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, it's either it's going to say what you're doing is working or what you're doing yes. is not working. And working right. means is it helping me achieve what I want, what I want for myself, or is it not? Yeah, it's all we it is. We took all the value judgments out of it. Yes. Yeah. And, and what I realized in that is how through this life of diets, and I do not call this a diet, because the other thing you said is you don't diet and then go back to the way you're eating. This is the way you are eating. You are choosing this for the rest of your life. That was a totally new concept for me. Mm. And so when I removed those judgments and talked to myself differently, it made a world of difference. Oh. And I was a person who probably had three, two or three diet sodas a day. I was very proud that they were diet sodas until I read beyond the calories to what was in it. <laughs> and and um, was always drawn to carbs and sweets and that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, when I started, literally, I stopped drinking diet soda that day. And I stopped eating all the, I have not had a piece of bread since January 10th. Mm -hmm. And I've not had a diet soda. And wow. that is, I mean, I give great kudos to the support and love of my cousin, but also to all of you, yeah. Barb and Lou especially. Oh. It really, it's been really wonderful. Oh, Adriana, I'm so glad you're here. And it sounds like yeah. you're doing wonderful. <gasps> it, I mean, there are challenges. Easter was really yeah. tricky. Yeah. But again, I kept saying, you need to take this information while you're choosing this rather than this. And you need to think about it. Yeah. Instead of panicking and going, oh, okay, yeah. full of things I have no business eating. Right. So that, that has been wonderful. Yeah. Great. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. That's wonderful. Yeah, it oh, is. I can't wonderful. tell you. I'm Sometimes so you just need that one phrase or that one aha moment, like Oprah yes. Winfrey says, right? And and then it all clicks for you, and you go, "I got this." Yeah, you, you've got this, Adriana. So you you're it. you're on your way. You got you're it going there. on. I like to say you're there. Everything else will come with time. But yes. you're already there. Yeah. Is that you're lined up with that switch in my head. Yeah. Yep. You're lined up with heart. that energy that, that when I read that yes. quote, you got that your energy is lined up with your desire and then your actions will follow. But the, the actions yes. are inconsequential if you if you don't have that you're not lined up with correctly. You're you're absolutely right. Yeah. There has been a switch. And as I said, this has been a long, like, lifelong challenge, yeah. but something switched. And yes, I may have been ready. Yes, all those things. But the two of you together have given me so much uh, uh, to move forward with. Nice. Yeah. So I need to run, but thank you, and I'll be here next week. Okay. Right. Bye, thank you, Adriana. All right. Oh, Liz, you're going to wrap us up. Hi, Liz. My why. Um, Immediately when I started watching Lulu, I, th I thought, oh my gosh, there is someone else in this world that thinks like me? How is this possible? And I am, I have always been like a lone wolf in the way I think. And so it felt so good to watch and, and see someone who is got it together with the way that they think. Let me explain. So my father, I've watched my father be sick his whole life. And as he was aging, it was worse. And that is because he had diabetes. And as he was getting old, he's now passed away. May he rest in peace. As he was, you know, um, getting older, developing different things, but even something as simple as getting a, a cold or the flu that would put him in the hospital because he was diabetic 
and his insulin would go crazy and then he'd be in the hospital then he would get pick up something else at the hospital and, and it was just like a never-ending snowball and when i had my son i de developed just gestational diabetes and i thought oh my gosh does this mean i'm diabetic you know and i i read up on it and i had to like um stick myself with uh an insulin uh shot thing every day in my belly that's where my baby was and i just didn't feel good about doing that but i i had to because i had to keep my sugars you know uh my my insulin right or whatever it is and so after i delivered I learned that I didn't have diabetes anymore. And uh, I said, well, I've got to learn how, what I got to do. I'm not going to be developing diabetes. And I saw that um, the statistics were that, I don't know, very, very high percentage of women who have gestational diabetes do develop in their lifetime diabetes. And I said, but no, it's not going to be me. So I learned how to eat so I would not be diabetic. And I was like militant about it. And it is not this way of eating, it's a different way of eating and it works. But then I developed, um, you know, then I had menopause and I've always had a thyroid issue. And so the combination of my thyroid hypothyroid, slow thyroid, of course, the combination of that and menopause, I put on a lot of weight and I couldn't take it off. And so I said, well, you know, I accept this because that's just how it is when you get older and, but I don't have diabetes. And that was the biggest thing for me is to not develop diabetes and the way I was eating kept my blood sugar is beautiful, okay? But then last um, last Lent, I am Catholic, and so I practice uh, Lent to prepare for Easter, and I give something up, and I was preparing to give something up. And what would get me through my days, I mean, I had my coworkers and my family trained. I don't eat that way. I eat this way. And they know. And so whenever there would be a celebration of any kind, I would bring on my little thing and I would have my pre-planned thing or holidays or anything like that. And I would eat that. And, um, and everybody accepted that because it's been so many years, they're used to it. I really, they couldn't believe like I never um, fall, fall off except for two weeks out of the year. Christmas break and my vacation when I would go up to Maine for vacation. Those two weeks, I would I would just eat whatever I wanted. I wouldn't go crazy, but I, I did not stay with this weight that I ate. And then it would take me, you know, I would get right back on the wagon after Christmas break or after my vacation. And everybody knew that. And so they never did any peer pressure or anything because I had already established this is the, how I eat. And it's really weird because I never lost weight from it. And at that Lent, something inside of me said, and I attribute it to the Holy Spirit, God inside of me, is that small, still voice that if you take time and, and, and if you allow you know, that little voice, that small, still voice really is there within us. And um, it said, no, give up, give up bacon for Lynn. I said, what? I don't want to give up bacon. That is what keeps me eating this way is at work, if they're celebrating a, a birthday or something, and I say, and they offer me a piece, so I'm there celebrating with them, I don't have it. But I tell myself as I'm going back to my office, bacon, 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 and having just two slices of bacon every night as my dessert is what kept me eating this way.
because to me, that was so satisfying. Well, when that small, still voice said, give up bacon for Lynn, I was pretty, I know it wasn't my idea because I would never, anybody who knows me knows how I feel about bacon and I, I would never make that up. I would never give bacon up. But then I said, well, I love you more. I love you, Lord, more than I love bacon. So I'm going to, I'm going to give up bacon. And I gave up bacon for Lent. As time went, I thought I would, and, and um, so Lent is spiritual preparation for Easter. So, you know, there's prayer and, and fasting and almsgiving and, and just, you know, more spiritual than you would be normally. So as I'm going through my spiritual practices, my praying, praying and stuff, it's like, now what, what, uh, what am I going to do now? What am I supposed to do? And, and that small, still voice said, don't worry. I will present you with what you need when you need it. And then things started coming over time. Things, things presented themselves to me. And it was, have you ever thought about what you're, the way that you're eating right now, doing something different? Cause I had been doing it for like 10 years. And then I, I, something else was introduced, which was, hmm, I wonder if I, if I track what I'm eating right now, what is it? Come to find out, I was like practically starving myself because I was on the bandwagon like everybody else doing intermittent fasting and then eating this way. And I was practically starving myself. I was not having enough protein way below the RDA. I was having way too much fat and the carbs, of course, that's what I was limiting. And that's why my blood was just fine. And I never developed diabetes because I kept them so low, so low, way below 20, like very low. And what I was doing is my body was like stopped. I kept that weight around me because it, it was not getting the nourishment it needed. And I didn't understand that until I started tracking. And then I started, um, some other things came into my life and Lulu, you're one of them. And I thought, what in the world, how, how can that work? I don't think it'll work for my body because my body is susceptible to diabetes. So I can't eat that many carbs. I can't eat that many vegetables. That's not good for me but I tried it and within like two weeks, bang, my body responded so quickly. My body started um, losing weight and I could, I was so surprised. I was literally surprised how wonderful my body was responding. And all I had to do was let go of the idea that I had that this is the only way that I can eat to keep diabetes away. That was a big thing because when you have got this mindset and you believe it and you belong to groups that believe it as well, it's hard to let go of that belief. But I did, I did through my spiritual practices and, and believing my body was responding so well eating this way. And let me tell you, it's very delicious to eat this way. My, it's so nice when you can have a big ass salad and you're looking at all of this array of, of colors and you're crunching and munching. And I don't know, it's just so nice. Of course, the protein too. I started eating more protein because I, I felt I needed it. I, I started reaching a lip to uh, made my goal to reach the RDA of protein for a female that I learned, Oh, maybe I'm, since I'm 60, I need to eat like more because of the healing that my body needs. And 
So I'm not going to say what can work for anybody, but for me, Lulu, the fact that I'm not the only one who eats differently in the room is so wonderful. And to have this group here that I'm not the only one who eats differently is just, I, I love it. I love it. This whole week, what kept me going was the thought that was the thing that Nicole said, which was, this group is the motor to my wagon. I love that. I love that saying that she said last week. And that just, I kept remembering that. And so I get so much out of this group. Thank you so much oh, for putting so, it on and yeah. I get every week. I'm so glad that you shared Liz. And, and I love that, um, that you are, it's just interesting, like starving yourself and not eating enough is, doesn't really serve you well either. You know, so it's like, look at the volumes of food you can eat when they're in the right proportions and it's all yeah. whole foods and how good you can feel. So glad you're feeling better. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. I lost, uh, so it's been 60 pounds. I lost 60 pounds and uh, uh, for my ideal weight, I, I've got to go maybe about eight more pounds. And now I'm looking towards um, the idea of maintenance and everything. And I can see that, um, in future weeks, I'll be asking about that kind of stuff. Maybe we should do. But, maybe but, we could even do a. Um, we'll do a, one a topic. Maybe we can write that one down, Bob. The topic, yeah, sure. the topic of maintenance and what that looks like and how to transition into it. Um, yeah. You know, yes. Even when it's not right, if it's not right around the corner for for some of us, it's like something to think about. Yeah. You know, another thing would be like what to do when you're sick. Maybe we can talk about that next week. Um, just what, what, you know, what, you, how do you follow this food plan when you're sick and you don't have an appetite and how do you still kind of stay on track and not just take a break from it and whatever happens happens, but to actually, so maybe we should, uh, yeah. Why don't we talk about those two things next week? Those, yeah. Those are good that's topics. Good yep. thing to add, if I could, which is, um, like when I was eating that other way, I would tell my son is that if anything ever happens to me, or if I'm very old and like not don't have my mind anymore, make sure like in, if I'm in the hospital with a, you know, in an accident or something, make sure that they feed me this way. My body needs to eat this way. And so now I'm eating this new way. And I'm wondering if we were put in the hospital because hospital food is, in my opinion, and I don't know if there's anybody who works in a hospital or anything, but that's very bad food. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, I, we'll, put, we'll, we'll touch on that too. What I would do, yeah. if, I, I haven't been in the hospital yet, but if I was in, in the hospital, I, I would tell you, I'll tell you what I would do. Yeah, I yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, thanks. That sounds good. Yeah. All right, yeah, it was thanks, a great Liz. meeting, everybody. Oh my goodness! Yeah, thank very you good so meeting. much. You know, oh. can I say one thing before we leave? Yes. Again, I'll, I'll I'll end it like I started. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor, but Liz brought it up, and I think it's a valid point. You hear about menopause and women and not being able to lose weight and thyroid and not being able to lose weight. Look, sixty one. I have hypothyroidism also, and I was able to lose weight. So I think that's all balarkey. Baloney, smoloney. I think anybody can lose weight if they put the proper foods in their pie hole. That's what I think. You just got to treat yourself well. And Liz, you're doing it, and you know you can do it. And um, yeah, getting rid of bacon was probably a blessing for you, Liz. <laughs> What's the beginning? of the journey that I needed to learn. And I'm so thankful for it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm thankful. We go, through it when we're, we go through it when we're ready to receive it. Right, yep. Liz? 